thank you everybody for joining us today. We're gonna talk about the blue line extension and our draft route modification report. Um, just a little bit of kind of framing up the meeting is that we'll have about 30 minutes of presentation to get everybody grounded and where we are, what we're asking, uh, all that kind of stuff. And then we'll take the rest of the meeting for comments and questions. Um, if you have a question, feel free throughout the presentation, you don't need to wait for the end uh, to add a question into chat. Uh, we might answer it right then, but uh, for the most part, we will take questions at the end. You're also welcome that when we get to the question and answer portion, you can uh, raise your hand uh, and uh, we'll uh, unmute and ask the question verbally as well. Uh, I will read back the questions that we're answering so that folks know what we're talking about. Uh, but uh, otherwise, um, should be pretty straightforward. So um, we'll do a quick round of introductions of the project staff that are here today to present, uh, present and discuss with you. And then we'll get into the presentation itself. So I'll start out. Uh, my name is Sophia Guinness and I work for Metro Transit. I've been with the Blue Line since about 2015, uh, helping engage the community in every step of the way. I'll turn it over to Nick and then Kathy. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Nick Landwer. I'm with Metro Transit and have been with the project since 2015. And I'm the uh, design and engineering lead for Metro Transit for the project. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kathy Gold and I'm with Hennepin County. I've been with the county wearing various hats for about the last 19 years. And with the project, um, help administratively, also leading um, the project management of the contract for the anti displacement work group. Thank you, colleagues. Uh, oh, see if we get the slides to advance there. So kind of what we're going to go through today a little bit in more detail is I'm going to give a project overview. And then I'm going to turn it over to Nick to walk through some of the findings in the draft route modification report. Uh, and then Kathy will give an update on the anti-displacement working group. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the, the whole time, um, Besides asking in chat, one of the ways that you can look things up is if you're at bluelineext.org, uh, we have the presentation available for you to follow along and go back and forth on. Uh, we also have kind of design concepts for all of our communities. So um, if you have something specific that you want to look at, uh, even if we're not covering it today, a lot is online. So with that, I'll just kind of get us a little bit into the presentation. Sorry for the phone ringing. I didn't mute it. So uh, the blue line is part of our metro network. So fast, frequent, reliable improvement to our transit service. And it connects you to the region. Uh, with a single ride, when we have the blue line constructed, you could go all the way from Brooklyn Park uh, into downtown Minneapolis or all the way to Mall of America or the airport or connect uh, to other, other lines that bring you around the region. So it's part of just uh, improving how we can get around. Many of you might have been following this project for quite a long time. And one of the things that happened is that in 2020, uh, Met Council in Hennepin County made the decision to move this project for out the use of freight rail property. We would gotten to the point uh, where we really wanted to deliver this project and it just wasn't going to cut it on the railroad. So uh, after we made that announcement, we've been working for the better part of a year to find a community supported route. And, and through that year, we've been adding details and confirming our work. So starting out with kind of putting routes out into the world and asking if we'd missed anything uh, to starting to put potential new station areas um, and, and, and some background design work as well. We're in the point right now where we just released our draft route modification report for review and comment. And Nick will go more into it later, but we're, we're hoping for lots of comments and we're accepting them through January 25th. Uh, the feedback that we receive will help uh, shape the final route modification report anticipated out uh, this springtime. Kind of how does that fit in the overall context of the project? Because we have a lot of conversations. So we're in this year of identifying our community supported route. Once we have that route, it'll be a launching place for us to do more in-depth analysis and community engagement in the years to come. So we'll have a year plus uh, to do environmental review. That's making sure we have all the impacts disclosed and identifying their mitigation, seeking 
Um, it's called consent from the cities, which is basically the cities get to review all the design plans and say that looks good. Uh, and then take some time to really develop those construction ready plans and get into the meat of a lot of the design uh, and details that really take the train from just kind of a 2D thing and make it uh, the, the, the benefits and the beauty um, that we can see in our communities. And then we probably need about four years of construction before the line opens. So if everything uh, goes well, the earliest we could have the line open is about 2028. So uh, if you have many, many questions today, we're you know, just kind of starting the process of detailing them out and answering them. To give a little background of how we've kind of moved this project to have these recommended routes, uh, to get to these recommended routes, is the corridor is not completely the same. So in Brooklyn Park, we were not on freight rail property. So we were able basically to just confirm that that area could stay the same, that you could, that you could keep your stations and your route along West Broadway in that part. In county and uh, area two, uh, looking at County Road 81 and really confirming that that was the best the best option for us to move forward. And then in Minneapolis, it was identifying and proceeding with uh, an, another route, a new route option, which we will show you in a second. And so kind of how we got uh, the lines on the map was looking at adopted uh, project goals and principles Kind of where where does LRT work best? Uh, applicable previous work, and of course, community feedback on destinations and connections. So with that, kind of got to the place where again, keeping our Brooklyn Park area uh, how it is, and then in area two, um, the old alignment and the new alignment really, really just kind of parallel each other. So we're able to preserve a lot of the benefits and, and plans um, with modifications in the 63rd Avenue in Brooklyn Park, at Bass Lake Road in Crystal. Uh, you're still serving the downtown Robbinsdale area, just uh, but a slightly different location. Um, and uh, with the previous project, one of the places that we heard the most about that had been a missed opportunity to connect with was North Memorial Hospital. And with this new route, we we're able to do that. Uh, and then in Minneapolis, we have two options that we're asking the community to help us evaluate right now, which is uh, a Lowry Washington route shown there in purple and a West Broadway to Lindell route shown in green. To get to this place, we've had a lot, a lot of community engagement and uh, some of you might have been with us at many events throughout the year and some of, us, some of you might be joining us new uh, but we've talked to over 9,000 individuals during this process and a lot of emails and phone calls and just uh, comment, comments as well, uh, but re really an ongoing conversation with the community. We've heard a lot of things, uh, but things that have kind of resonated throughout the corridor with all, with all communities is to make decisions with the lens of fairness for the communities uh, to minimize property impacts. And Nick will go into this in, as we evaluate the um, and the route evaluation report, but many uh, many of it were able to really preserve uh, uh, property impacts, partly because of the roadways we're on and the options that we've put forward to minimize property acquisition. Pedestrian safety in particular is one that folks bring up all the time and will be a focus of our design work moving forward because it is also a priority uh, for, for the project office, as well as just all the station safety features. And then support of businesses during construction in that phase. So kind of looking to the future. With that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Nick. Um, he's going to kind of uh, go over the how the project ranks against our project goals, as well as how we did the evaluation. So Nick, take it away. All right. Well, thank you, Sophia. And thank you, everybody, for joining us this afternoon uh, uh, for, for this open house. And uh, just want to put in a little bit of framework. Uh, uh, Sophia walked through uh, some of the different areas here and uh, just want to put everybody into perspective here. The, the work that we're doing you know, right now in Area 1, Brooklyn Park, uh, West Broadway, you know, our, our plans are, are very highly developed at, at that point. Uh, you know, we, we're, we're comfortable with where we're at. Uh, we're, we're not moving those. But as we move down the, the, the corridor through Crystal, uh, Robbinsdale into Minneapolis, uh, you know, we're looking at that route modification to, that takes us from the, the freight rail corridor and, and looks to see where that new route alignment is. And as we show you um, uh, some graphics, some concept designs and stuff, uh, please remember those are at a very high level or, or very, 
very, I, I guess, low level of engineering, uh, you know, very low percentage, you know, that some of them look pretty developed, but they're, 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 they're based on just a, a little bit of work to, as opposed to some of the work that we've done up in Brooklyn Park, where we're at 90% plans. So uh, uh, bear with us there, but uh, really what the purpose of, of, of this draft report that we're, that we, we, uh, we issued or released in, in December, and we're in a, in a 45 day comment period for this right now, um, the, the the purpose of this report is to uh, to to share and, and compile all the documents that we've put together, uh, you know, based on uh, on work we've done with our project partners and and the feedback that we've gotten from the community since since last March. And so we're, we're putting this all down to to look at what those new route options are along there, putting all this all this information together. And and we're trying to uh, have an evaluation that incorporates the input from. All, all of our project partners and, and from from the community over this 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 past year or, or at least since the March when we've been working on this stuff and we're trying to provide just an overview of the technical work that we've done that that we we're doing that informs some of the route options for this modification so we, we tried to explain a little bit about what we put together on that and uh, what we're what we're really doing with this report we're not re, uh, comparing route against a route we're comparing our routes against the project goals and we'll get into the project goals here uh uh in the in the next slide or the, the following slide but uh um that that's what we're really trying to do is take all the information and and apply it to our project goals to, to see how things work out so as we go through this uh, assessment of of how well each route option uh meets our project goals you know we put together just an assessment uh uh an analysis and, and and left it pretty simple, you know, poor, uh, good and medium. And so um, poor would mean that it does not meet our project goals. And and as we brought forward uh, route options in, in the uh, report, you're not going to see the poor because those kind of fell out along the way. You know, they, they, they were too impactful to the community. They had too many impacts uh, of, of right away. They maybe didn't uh, serve the community. So that's why that, that we're just not even bringing four of those. But uh, uh, what we do evaluate is good. I mean, and good means that it meets our project goals. It provides a benefit to the community and, and, it, and it would be a really good uh, uh, project and good amenity as, as, as we've assessed it for the community. Excellent uh, it means that it has a, a, a unique characteristic or has the potential to really uh, a, a deliver exemplary benefits uh, for, for the community there. So uh, next slide, please. So this is a slide matrix. Uh, you know, this is kind of the uh, uh, putting together all the information we've had and, and taking a, 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 a stab at rating them again to, towards our project goals, which you see on the left-hand side, those are our six project goals. And, uh, and, and then we've taken each one of these, all other side by side, again, they're, 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 these, uh, these uh, assessments are based on the goal and not compared to each other along there. So um, the three columns are, are on Botano Boulevard, uh, the County Road 81, that section that, that goes from Brooklyn Park down through Crystal and, and, and through Robbinsdale. And then uh, when we get into Minneapolis, uh, where we have the two route options, we have the Lowry route and the West Broadway route. So I think, again, the, the key thing to look at here is, you know, you see excellent good, but good means it's a, it, it, it's really a good project and, and it'd be a great candidate for a light rail as, as we uh, move forward. Uh, next slide, please. So um, as we looked up again, we'll talk a little bit more. I'll, I'll bring it back up. Uh, area number one in Brooklyn Park is is the area that's on West Broadway was not affected by uh, uh, the inability to work with, within that that freight rail corridor. So the plans there have not not changed. Uh, the station locations on West Broadway uh, remain the same with with stations at Oak Grove at 93rd Avenue, 85th Avenue, and Brooklyn Boulevard. Um, and and the recommendation working with 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 our uh, project partners in Brooklyn Park is to to that that this area is still consistent with the project principles and therefore you know we're, let's keep it as it is here and and maintain those existing route that, that provides that that opportunity to advance transit development along along that area you know specifically again West Broadway Avenue 
So as, as we talk a little bit about what's inside the report and how we've rated against the goals, uh, you know, there, there, there's quite a bit of material and work in there. So we're just going to use a, a, a couple of goal examples here of, and, and have that discussion of, of, of how we e evaluated uh, the, these sections and each goal to, to our project principles. So uh, goal one uh, is, is, a, is a real key goal. I mean, it's to improve transit access uh, along this corridor um, and make sure that we're providing the connections to jobs and, and providing those connections to, to regional destinations. So, uh, you know, some of the examples that, that we're looking at that, that inform this goal that, 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 that help us evaluate it is, is just the overall ridership and the ability to expand and, and to improve service within this area. Uh, specifically, we want to focus on folks with, with limited access to cars or no access to cars. Um, we also want to make sure that that we're focusing on not just the, those commute opportunities. Everybody thinks about that that morning and afternoon peak where people are going to work or coming home, but we want to make sure that as we're evaluating these alignments, that we're looking at you know that that reverse commute. You know, the folks that maybe go in the the opposite direction uh, during those morning peaks, but also we want to look at the off-peak uh, transit opportunities. You know, really that those are the day-to-day -day trips that that folks that are are, are when you're going shopping, you got to uh, make a drop off at daycare, you, you, you need to go to school, you want to go have lunch. Those would be the off peak transit com and, and those are where people are taking care of their their their, their day, day to day um, uh, tasks that they need to do. Um, we also wanted to make sure that we're uh, we're taking this opportunity to expand on and improve the, the transit linkage uh, system. So there was a map shown earlier on in this presentation that that has the Metro Transit uh, high capacity, uh, um, high frequency uh, alignments. You know the light rail alignments and the BRTs in there, and and we want to we want to uh, keep building that backbone to the system that that offers the opportunities to connect into our other transit system linkages and 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 provide those multimodal uh, connections so so people can get around a lot more efficiently and better and really build a robust system for Metro Transit. Um, we want to be able to maximize on, on transit access, you know, to both, you know, for people for, to get to homes or from their homes, uh, to their employments, to their schools, to, to the community services, uh, to, to, to those doctor visits, the, to the clinic visits for, for shopping, you know, to be able to get to parks, you know, to, to, to make that access. Say you want to go for a bike ride and you want to go down on the Grand Rounds, if you can get your bike on the train and, and, and make that connection or go for a walk in the park or, or visit and and other activity centers uh, along this area, whether it, you know it's it's recreational or or uh, other. So a lot a lot of different examples out there, but we 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 want to make this a, a, as an opportunity for people to use this in their everyday life. So as as we look at these goals and the findings uh, across the board in in goal one, um, the 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 three different areas that we're looking at are are all in excellent. I mean, they, they really, the transit here would really bring a, 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 and, and the way the, the area is set up is, is uh, an excellent opportunity for, for transit to serve this area. So as we look at the County Road, road uh, 81 section, uh, one, of, one of the graphics or, or pieces of material that we're showing here is an example that's in the report are walk sheds. And, uh, you know, these are broken out, you know, in that five, 10, 15 minute uh, walk shed. And, and as, as you go a little bit longer walk shed, but around the station area, th this is really how to get to the station area and what's there. And, and it breaks down some of the demographics and, and statistics in this area, as far as, you know, how many people are living in this area? What are the jobs in the area? Uh, what are key destinations? Uh, you know, uh, are, there, are there key destinations in this area that people will be traveling to? Uh, we look at demogra demographics as, as far as, as, as uh, uh, diversity and, and diversity in income and lower income and zero car uh, households are in here. So, you know, Bass Lake Road really keeps um, serving those opportunities that we had on the previous alignment or not just Bass Lake Road, County Road 81 serves those pre uh, previous opportunities we had with the station at 63rd Avenue and a station at Bass Lake Road. We really feel that we can continue to to keep those opportunities, to keep that access to regional connections and, and, and provide that the, those uh, uh, opportunities to get to destinations. Now, as Sophia brought up before, um, well, we, as we get into downtown, we, Robbinsdale, we can still can, uh, 
serve that downtown Robbinsdale area and the businesses there and, and the opportunities there, but it also offers us the opportunity, uh, which we did not have in our previous alignment, was to, it was to get to North Memorial and, and serve the you know the, the the hospital services, the clinic services that that is provided in that area, as well as along this alignment again the the, the parks and, and and those different destinations. So uh, as we move down the route into uh, to that to that Lowry section again, uh, an excellent. Uh, on this area, the the same graphic here that 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 shows some of those uh, uh, numbers that 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 help to uh, kind of weigh out what what the area looks like. So, th this is a, an excellent opportunity here to say serve neighborhoods with uh, limited or no access to personal vehicles. There's a pretty high percentage of that. It is is a good opportunity to uh, serve areas with lower income households and and an area with a high proportion of residents of color. So we, we, we can help out in, in those areas. Um, it also provides uh, a great access to, to community destinations along Lowry Avenue, uh, along uh, with you know accessing the North Loop as it goes through uh, Lowry Avenue down Washington and, and uh, you know, the potential to, 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 to uh, have a connection with the Upper Harbor Terminal development uh, that, that's that's going on at, at uh, just north of Lowry, uh, all north of Lowry in Washington. Um, one of the things, though, that that, that uh, uh, may, may be a, a little bit uh, against this uh, alignment is it is longer than in West Broadway and in transit uh, many times uh, a longer distance means, you know, you, you can serve more areas, uh, have a few more stations uh, potentially, but also it does make that trip longer and when the trip gets longer then that starts having uh, adverse effects to, to, to ridership on so there's you know a lot of material that goes into that uh, another thing to take of note here is is you know we, we really do have good access along the the lowry area but as, as you start going down uh, washington avenue there there is some limitations with how you can access stations in that area because of uh, that nine I ninety four barrier along there, and with the Mississippi River, uh, so that those kind of act as as barriers that that limit you know some of that more free movement for folks to ride or or bike or access station locations. Um, moving along to West Broadway on Goal One again, again this is an excellent uh, area for this, and and one of the reasons is uh, is West Broadway. What we've heard from the public is. Is this is kind of the, the, a cultural heart with with the commercial districts uh, where, where where people not just live here but they work and and they spend their time and and, and do 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 their their business along here. So, um, it, this area also provides access to numerous cultural access uh, assets and, and destinations. You know, I, I guess the one that pops to the top of my head is you know the Capri Theater that that is in this area, but also the churches along this area uh, and, and the Minneapolis Public Schools has has a uh, has their their headquarters in this area too so there's there's a lot of uh, destinations here um this does ser serve neighborhoods with limited or no access again to to personal uh, uh vehicles uh, it serves the lower uh, income households and also those those areas with a uh, higher uh, proportion of residents with color so and, and uh, one of the other goals so we looked at goal number one there uh goal number four Five is another goal that 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 we we want to take a look at, just using as as an example here of how light rail can help promote the healthy community, uh, help with the uh, sound environmental practices, uh, and 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 help us to to uh, address the efforts of of, of uh, addressing climate change and and what we can do to uh, to to uh, help that out. So uh, really. Um, what this goal does is, is we want to uh, minimize the impacts to natural and cultural resources. You know, we want to make sure that we you know, we have as light of a footprint as we can to you know you know not disturb that that existing community and not disturb the the, the natural uh, uh, resources along along it. Uh, so we want to make an assessment of the connections from stations to recreation facilities for people to be able to access. Uh, uh, healthy food options to you know to get their their, their groceries to go out to or to get something to eat um, and maximize the health and benefit and environmental benefits you know the one thing you uh, a lot of people think of some don't is you know light rail and transit really does also uh, promote folks to walk you know instead of having to make a trip and jump in the car you know you can walk a few blocks get on the train and and, and get to your destination and come back so you know it gets folks out there and activated in the neighborhood a little bit more 
Um, assessment of existing and future, you know, so one of the things what we need to do is assess the, the, the existing uh, uh, connections for sidewalks and trails and, and some of the future trails that are either being planned or the potential for them. And, and, and how do we improve, uh, how do we get folks to the station? How do we improve the safety uh, for, for folks getting to the, our stations, make those connections, uh, make it accessible for folks that, that are, that are on, 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 uh, not in vehicles. They're, they're out there walking, biking, or, you know, rolling to get to the, to, to their destination. Um, and we want to also make sure that we're taking, uh, an assessment of how we can produce the, uh, reduce those greenhouse ga gases emissions through uh, reducing vehicle miles traveled. You know, get folks out of their personal vehicles, get them into the train. Which you know, it, it, obviously, it's an electric train. It's it's it has a very low uh, carbon footprint. You know, compared to automobiles and and why not? So next slide here. Um, some of the findings that we found again as, as we go along County Road 81 that that, uh, that this is really a good opportunity and, and again good means this is a great uh, you know a, 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 an awesome uh, opportunity you know to get light rail in this area so this provides that opportunity to locate LRT within an existing transportation facility you know it's County Road 81 Hennepin County Road and so we're maximizing on that space uh, that that's already there. Uh, we're, we're able to, uh, you know, maximize on environmental impacts or reduce them by using that existing uh, space of, of that corridor and providing opportunities uh, for pedestrians and bicycles so that they're kind of already feeding into these locations to these uh, uh, intersections. And, and, and this is a good I, I, opportunity to, to, to I, I guess, uh, intensify how we get transit in this area. Uh, we this also advances the state and the counties, uh, the state of Minnesota and the Hennepin County's climate action plans. I mean, they, they, they have a, a, a concerted goal of reducing the vehicle miles traveled here as we go into the future to get folks out of their personal vehicles and, and, and using other modes of transportation, uh, uh, in particular uh, transit in this case. So. Uh, also, we want to make sure that, or th that it does, we, we know that this opportunity would provide access to grocery stores and to the regional park systems, to the Three River Park um, uh, trail systems out there, to, to parts of, of the Minneapolis Park uh, system. And uh, we also, uh, yeah, so switched over here to uh, Lowry Avenue to, to look at the same thing. So uh, again, a, a good finding on this. Uh, the, the alignment along Lowry uh, provides uh, roadway and overall safety improvements. So as we look at how we s situate the stations, how we put them in place, we'll want to make sure that we get passengers uh, to those stations safely. So you know, we want to make sure that we're enhancing and providing uh, th th those safe accesses and crossings when you're in roadways to get to stations across the road. Um, this again advances the states and the county's uh, climate action plans of reducing vehicle miles traveled. Uh, provides an excellent way to access access the uh, grocery stores and the regional park systems again. And uh, but 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 knowing that as as it's going through that that there are you know potential impacts for environmental impacts, social and cultural resources impacts. So you know the, although we want to tread lightly, reduce that footstep that. That there is the potential to have impacts all, all along there to um, properties. Um, on West Broadway, the, the, the same thing here. It's, it's, it, we find this is, is really a, a good location for that and, and it has a good rating. Again, it, it provides uh, roadway and overall safety improvements that we can work on with, with, as we implement the project. Uh, again, we uh, advance those. those uh, uh, goals, climate action goals of reducing vehicle miles travel. And one thing to note, just because of kind of the, some of the, the the select trips and stuff that that are anticipated to come from that, that that Lowry could uh, reduce vehicle miles travel to to a, a greater extent than the Lowry route did does. And that has to do with a lot of different factors. But you know, some some of it's more of the destinations going in there and 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 um, and trip generation. Also provides access to grocery stores in the regional park system in here, and uh, uh, you know one thing to, as as I just mentioned before, really West Broadway is important because it is a commercial hub and a gathering place. 
Uh, but we also need to be sensitive that that one of the drawbacks is uh, that that during construction we know that there will be impacts. Those are a concern to the community, and it'll require uh, project staff on on any of these alignments really. Uh, that we'll need to look at how we effectively mitigate for those impacts during construction, you know, how we limit the impacts to the community, how we provide uh, 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 access to, to businesses and residents uh, uh, during construction. So next steps here, uh, again, we released this uh, draft report on December 13th. We're in that 45 day comment period. So uh, January 25th is, is kind of the deadline to get comments in. Uh, this is available if, if you don't have a copy of this already on our project website uh, at bluelineextension.org. We can go in there. That, that gives the opportunity to pull this stuff up, uh, to look at it, go through it, and provide feedback on, uh, on it and ask questions on, on this draft report. So, uh, again, the draft report uh, does not recommend a route. It's, it's, it's really pulling together all of our work that we've done over the last year and put it in a, in a location so folks can go through it and, and really dive into it and 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 and, and come up with questions and, and, and inform an opinion. Uh, the spring of 2022, uh, likely the March time frame is, is when we will have a final route modification report and that will have a recommended community supported route that that to, to move forward with uh, and, and into that engineering as, as we move along into our schedule. So uh, with that in place, as, as, as we stay on that schedule, uh, summer 2022, as, as we go back to that schedule chart that, that Sophia showed earlier, is when we would begin that environmental process, when we still really start looking at what that, that community support route is that we're moving forward with. And that's when we'll look at uh, in more detail of what those environmental impacts are, uh, what the mitigation for those impacts are, and, and work on that and, and really dive into our design work at that time. Thanks, so. Nick, for giving an overview of the draft uh, report. A lot of good content in there. I hope that uh, kind of summary gave folks an idea of what's in it and uh, all, all that kind of stuff. We'll turn it over to Kathy to just spend a couple minutes talking about our parallel effort uh, to put together an anti-displacement work group slash initiative. Yeah, thanks, Sophia. Uh, hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, so in our earlier engagement efforts, the project team heard repeatedly from community concerns about gentrification and displacement um, that has been known to occur with large infrastructure projects, such as this blue line extension project. And to address this, Hennepin County and Met Council um, have under uh, went a contract with the University of Minnesota Center for Urban and Regional Affairs, or CURA, to form and lead and facilitate an anti-displacement work group to help build investment and support community wealth in the existing community, and that means residents, businesses, and, and cultural assets. Um, and we're, we're currently um, accepting applications to call members for the anti-displacement work group. Um, and those applications will be accepted through January 14th. Um, our lead for this work is C. Terrence Anderson. Um, he is CURA's Director of Community-Based Research. Uh, C. Terrence is a North Minneapolis resident, very well respected in the community and by the project team. He is doing an awesome job getting us geared up toward um, starting to uh, go down the road of having some meetings scheduled um, and moving forward uh, with this important work. So happy to have him as our lead person. Um, the work group will be comprised of community members and organizations, businesses, um, and we'll also have government representatives at the table to work through and bring back to each of their perspective agencies, discussion points to keep positive progress moving toward implementable strategies and policy recommendations to mitigate displacement. Um, currently, Cura is organizing research and analysis to help inform discussions to take place over the next year plus, um, pertaining to both positive and negative impacts from the operating blue and green lines 
um, in addition to housing and cultural displacement and business displacement. As I said, we're really excited to get this work underway and meetings are being scheduled to take, create space and time to have productive discussion and uh, work toward implementable actions to support community wealth and stability. Thank you, Kathy, for that. It's uh, really important to, for the project team to serve existing community and build upon the desires that folks see with this transit investment. So it'll be a wonderful parallel effort uh, that goes along with our design and environmental work. Uh, we are now at the question portion of our meeting, and I see a couple already in chat that we'll get to right away. Again, uh, for those that might be joining late, uh, there's a couple ways that you can ask questions. One is just to put it in chat, and that's what we'll start going through now. Also, feel free to raise your hand. You'll be able to unmute and also ask a question. And if we have both uh, things, we'll just kind of toggle between uh, those two things. And um, I'm going to flip through slides really, really quick to help uh, pull up a graphic uh, that the, the first questioner is referencing. Uh, which is um, basically wondering about the parallel route that we're showing on uh, 21st Street. And so the, that you are correct, you do see a, a green line also along 21st. And the reason for that is that in this portion of West Broadway, it's fairly tight. Uh, and in our desire to basically provide options and minimize property impacts, We've looked at um, multiple options that either take the LRT up to 21st during during that segment, uh, both whether it's both tracks, single track, and leave the other track in West Broadway as well as roadway designs. Anything you want to add so, to that, Nick? Yeah, Sophie, I, I can jump in a little bit more to that. So uh, especially along West Broadway and Lowry, we've tried to have a few different alternatives with both of those options to show, you know, what how we can uh work within those th those routes and you know how we can mitigate some impacts that that may be out there so we've broken both we've broken between those two routes uh west broadway or lowry we have seven different seven different segments within those segments we have multiple alternatives in there and so uh, as sophia said that that would be in the segment three area along west broadway where we're providing quite a few different alternatives that, that, that could get uh, uh, traffic and light rail uh, through that area of West Broadway and, and what, what those options could be and, and what they would look like. If you wanna dive more into those particular options, uh, if you are on our project website, so bluelineext.org, kind of go to the middle of the page, you'll see a map link. There's an interactive map and you can basically click on the various sections and pull up the specific design plans and go through all the options. We also have kind of, we call them roll plots. So if you're on our website, you can pull up those roll plots. Um, if you have comments on kind of what you see in those options, uh, please feel free to provide them you know, through, our, through our comment period. In a sense, um, while we have multiple options for either route, that's, that's not something that we have to decide within this year. It, they're intended to give the community a frame of reference uh, basically what could be. Uh, and then as as we select a route, we'll get into greater and greater design detail, as Nick mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, so I hope that answers your question. We'll kind of go on to the next one. And the second question is, and, and Nick, feel free to start to answer this, but it's yeah. um, this questioner is asking if County Road 81 will be similar to University Avenue. How many lanes, how is that going to work? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I would characterize it. Yes, we would be center running at grades similar to University Avenue. Uh, with that said, in Robbinsdale, there's there's two lanes of uh, of uh, traffic in each direction through there. We'd be in the middle of those two lanes of traffic, and and the proposal or the the options, the alternatives that we've shown there have those two lanes. We we continue with the intersections that are are there. So really, it would be putting light rail within that that segment. Uh, as you get farther north, in, uh, north of Highway 100, we're working with the city of Crystal on this now, but uh, the existing roadway is, is six lanes of, of traffic, uh, three lanes in each direction. And what we've looked at there is, is, is putting the light rail in that area, 
reducing down to potentially reducing down to two lanes in each direction. So it'd be a uh, a four lane roadway again. But we know with that we'd have to look at you know th th there are some things that we still need to do to accommodate traffic. We need to particularly look at the intersections. And and the big ones we're looking at is as as we get into Highway 100. You know how do we keep the the traffic flows going from you know south down 81 into Highway 100? Do we add some more lanes in that in those locations and Bass Lake Road's a big one with uh, reducing down to four lanes. Uh, uh, we we do have some 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 capacity issues in that intersection, so we're looking at we have some options there of at grade and and even a grade separation on on Connor Road 81 that that would help with those traffic impacts and and, and help us you know potentially pursue a a, a four lane section through there. Thanks, Nick, and um, kind of bouncing off. From our previous question, um, a commenter mentioned a more zoomed in map um, and uh, of where we're talking about through 21st. So it's basically from Lindale uh, to where the uh, school board uh, headquarters is, Irving. right by Irving, yeah. where we connect back. Um, and I'm just going to, we'll probably jump around a little bit, but I'll just kind of get the presentation at the end where we have uh, links and things like that. So next question in the chat is, uh, what if cities object and refuse to provide municipal consent for any and all of the routes? Now maybe I'll start off with a little bit of the process and Nick and Nick and Kathy can jump in. Um, so municipal consent, at, first we're going to select a community supported route. Um, and then we will advance our design further. And, at one, and once we have our stations placed and basically all the details, that's when we will be seeking municipal consent from the cities. Uh, so in a, a little bit of time from now, it's not gonna happen this year. Um, and you know, basically as we go to seek municipal consent, we would have hoped that we would have worked collaboratively with all of our city partners to advance the design. Uh, so we would not be at that, uh, so that we'd have um, approval from all of our cities at that point. Uh, we wanna, you know, there's sometimes there's, there's uh, things to work out uh, but that will be part of the process to kind of go through. We what we would we do like to to work collaboratively with with all of our city partners. Want to add anything, Kathy or Nick? Good. No, I think that's good. Okay. Uh, can you show describe in more detail the portion right after Target Field? Um, kind of. I'm guessing we're talking about if we're. Um, if we're I, I, I can answer that. Yep. I think, uh, and 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 again, I I don't have uh, drawings to to pop up here uh, specifically for that. But on our project website, we have a couple different alternatives there that that you can go and pull up the PDFs, or if you jump into the uh, uh, the the public coordinate, you can actually click on that that segment there, and it will it will show you some of those alternatives set up side by side, but. How we uh, anticipate coming off the target field station, we're really constrained by existing buildings that are in place there, uh, some of the geometry of, of how the track operates. And, you know, Southwest is under construction right now where they're on a bridge that comes off of, of, uh, uh, of target field station and makes a curve over to Royalston. So it really kind of uh, dictates to us what, what, where we were in the previous pro con or project, project alignment as we had to come down and be at grade uh, as we came through the sixth and seventh intersection. And so we're, we're still in that. It's, it's really hard for us to, 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 to not, uh, uh, to, to, to try to cross those tracks prior to sixth and seventh. So we're looking at options that bring us down through the sixth and seventh intersection. Uh, and, and then maybe even uh, uh, to potentially take us up seventh, um, uh, to, to get north to, and, and curve around either to a, a Plymouth Avenue uh, station that gets us to Washington or uh, takes us uh, more towards Lindale and, and crosses over to uh, 94 towards Lindale. Lindale. So uh, the options that were shown there are, are coming down from Target Field Station, getting us at grade, but we have a couple different options there to show, um, uh, you know, what what are our opportunities are if if it's to stay on Olson Memorial Highway and and turn up Lindale or or if it's to go up seventh and 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 make those connections north. We 
making sure I'm unmuted. Um, in Robbinsdale, if keeping two lanes, will you need to purchase property? So kind of talking about the impacts within within Robbinsdale. Yeah, so so the options that we show in, in Robbinsdale right now do, do widen the roadway. Uh, the, the widening for the most part stays within uh, that county road right away or, or, or within public right away. Uh, um, there, there will be some impacts, uh, you know, some maybe temporary easements that we need to purchase for grading and, and getting things to connect in. Um, with, with some of those impacts in Romdale, there, there, are, there are parking impacts. So those are some things that we'll need to work with property owners there to, uh, of how we mitigate for those. Um, what we don't show uh, on any plans is, you know, if there's a potential for a park and ride in that area. Uh, obviously, if we were to put a park and ride in, 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 in Romsdale, then, then we would need to uh, acquire some property for that. But, you know, for the most part, the road uh, does not uh, uh, affect any buildings that, that would need to be uh, uh, permanently taken or acquired. So, I, and what I'm talking about there is, is mostly businesses in Robbinsdale. Uh, you know, we we really don't show uh, show, show on, on our alternatives any uh, impacts to homes. And I'm going to pull up a little bit more of our presentation zoomed in on the map for the previous questioner, and then uh, go to the next the next question. So, um, as Nick was talking about leaving Target Field. Uh, both on the Lindale route as well as the the Washington route. And if uh, if you're on our public coordinate map, you can also just look at an aerial to kind of see all the all the um, businesses and whatnot. So going to the next question in chat. So I think I can answer that one too. So this is on West Broadway in Brooklyn Park. Um, and and the design that we show going through there, and we work with the city is to uh, to have a four lane roadway uh, along there, and we would be center running with light rail down the middle. And and so we've done a you know pretty good analysis on, on how traffic will operate through there, uh, and and you know what the traffic capacity needs are there. And you know the the thing about center running uh, at grade light rail is it runs with the through traffic. So as the traffic is 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 flowing. Uh, along uh, West Broadway through signal systems, the train operates with it. So it's not on its own separate signal. It's really uh, how I characterize it as, as uh, coming out of a station, uh, you know, whether it's 85th or Brooklyn Boulevard, as the train leaves that station or it's going through an intersection, it's, it's, it's flowing with the existing traffic flow out there. So four cars go through that intersection at the same time the train's going through with it. So it really is compatible with traffic operations and, 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 the, and the train itself does not affect that, uh, the, the, the roadway operation sub substantially or you know, a lot. It, it, it really does work, it's compatible. The next question in chat is about um, that the commenter is mentioning that we're focused on light rail and has the team evaluated uh, bus rapid transit. So to start with, to give a little background on the project, is the the Blue Line Extension did in what's called an alternatives analysis, um, and that was at the point that we looked at: is this LRT? Is this bus? Is this um, you know kind of the various transit options? And we determined that light rail was the the best uh, fit for this corridor, both in terms of the potential ridership, um, the destinations that would potentially be served. And all and, and and all that kind of stuff. So uh, while we are uh, kind of reevaluating certain pieces of the project, this is still the blue the blue line extension and still uh, light rail options. We are just finding alternatives that don't use freight rail property. Um, so we are right now we are looking at a light rail solution. Okay. Uh, next question. Is the potential area of development from Lowry to West Broadway between the River Road and Washington being considered in evaluating the Lowry route? This is over a mile non-residential low-rise warehouse uh, base buildings that can offer development to high density or mixed use without displacing residents. So I think the 
Um, I think the question, the root of the question is basically, are we looking at um, kind of the potential for future development along the routes and, and, and whatnot? So I can take it or Nick, do you wanna start? Uh, I, 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 you, you can go with this one, uh, Sophia. Sure thing. So, you know, the part, part of the analysis is, you know, what exists today? What can we serve? So we don't want it to, we want to build light rail where people want to go, um, as well as potentially, you know, kind of future potential. So we, we look at both, uh, both things and, you know, the, we'll work with basically the county and the city once we select the route to make sure that we're maximizing development potential um, along along those lines, especially where we place uh, stations, but also but also in a way that reflects the community's uh, values and desires. You know, not everything is situated in the right. Uh, not every station has you know has the can look different. Um, and so it's you know if you're in a commercial district, uh, for example, it's how do you you might be looking at maximizing. Um, that if you need if you if you've identified that you need for, uh, more affordable housing, be looking at solutions in in, in that front. Um, you know we're in a built environment, so wherever we put light rail, we have to consider existing uses uh, and think of um, the best ways to to do it. But overall, the goal of our project is to minimize uh, property acquisition and general impacts. And so um, the team has really taken a deep dive to make sure that. We have all options that impact very few um, businesses or homes, and then it'll be part of thinking whatever route we pick, uh, thinking about those construction support programs um, that that help kind of get us get us through and, and even in a sense increase potential uh, desires within within. Um, going to the next question. The total number of crime is down across the light rail system, largely due to the pandemic. So, Met Sophia, I think you you missed one here on al alternative analysis and when that when that was completed. So, sure. Do you want to take a? I, I, I'm, I'm having a block here. I think the alternative analysis was done in well, in 2012. I think so. And then we yeah, we started our environmental process um, and kind of started the design yeah. work in the 2015 time yeah. frame. So so that 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 was done for for, for the pro. You know we we are in a route modification. Uh, we we are not reanalyzing the project. We are uh, uh, modifying the route here for the existing project. So uh, the analysis for 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 this alternatives analysis was was done. Um, Previous to, to to 2015, I think would be, be be the accurate way to answer that. So, okay, going on to the next question, which is um, which I started reading, but it's the it's a question about kind of to summarize it about what are the precautions being taken to reduce crime, um, noting and noting efforts kind of throughout our our transit system, um, and you know Metro Transit. Uh, Safety is an ongoing focus of our agency, and you know a couple of things that happen with the ex light rail expansion um, is that additional police officers, as well as support staff, are hired uh, to help uh, monitor and provide uh, response response uh, to issues and that kind of stuff. Um, you know we continue to have programs that help our riders. Uh, feel safe on our system. For example, uh, the text for safety program, you know, you're on the train, somebody's maybe engaged in a nuisance behavior, and uh, you can kind of just be on your phone and, you know, it text. Um, and then the our, our Metro Transit police PD can respond. We always have folks on the line somewhere. So they're, they're able to kind of get places pretty quickly. We also partner with our municipal municipalities. Uh, to address issues as they come up. Um, yeah. Nick, do you want to talk about safety features at stations and whatnot? And on the well, I would say I'd say uh, our, our 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 effort for safety and security starts uh, at the beginning or in design. You know, we we we're talking about it now with our project partners, uh, but as we get into design, we bring in uh, 
you know, local law enforcement. We bring in uh, first responders from from the communities at, that we serve and that that we're going to be building in. And, and we really work with them on, on the design of the project to make sure that it's safe and accessible and 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 a, and, and a place to be. So that that starts out early. Those conversations start early, and it gets incorporated into our design. So as we work on design for the stations uh, and and the whole system, it's. We, we do look at, you know, how, how do we make those secure? You know, are, are they well lit? Are there no hiding spots? Uh, we make sure that there, you know, there's there's cameras everywhere that are that are monitored uh, uh, at our rail train, our, our rail control center. Um, and and uh, so, so there, there's uh, safety buttons uh, uh, on stations. If, if there is an issue that, that people can to get that to, to to get the attention of first responders or the police on, on that so uh, it, it is key uh, during our design it's key you know as, as we're constructing these uh, going into the operation that that we're we're focusing on that i'm going to the next question um and this per the person's asking about what we've heard from businesses along west broadway apart from um, construction impacts, it's kind of like are folks wanting or not wanting uh, the route. And so, you know, we've, we've been having ongoing conversations uh, with the business district along West Broadway, including lots of door knocking and talking to folks and maybe another theme to highlight that folks have come up is there's a lot of um, small businesses um, that, that, are, that, that exist along West Broadway and we've heard a lot from them of if there is, you know, increased investment or development or things that come along with the light rail project, how how do they directly benefit uh, from 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 that investment? Um, you know, kind of noting that sometimes investment comes from you know the you know big b bigger entities, and you know we've really heard that very uh, loud and clear. Um, and you know, it'd be part probably part of things that we address in our anti-displacement work of how there's programs and policies that can really um, help these businesses grow, uh, or even smaller kind of entrepreneurs uh, get established in spaces. Of, you know, we've already started to get ideas from the community in terms of kind of business incubators and things like that, and so. Um, it'll be kind of beyond the rails in a sense of, of putting together that package of strategies um, that really that really foster existing businesses. Um, on we also learned a lot from our green line that we'll hope to continue to build upon. And you know the, that what the package of support during construction can look like. Um, for example, Green Line had a Ready for Rails program that helped businesses remodel, improve their facades, do all that kind of uh, kind of use that construction time to really um, boost boost things that they wanted to do or are holding on. So um, I think that'll be a big part of the program. You know, we also have you know, some social service agencies along the route, and we've heard a lot from them about uh, making sure that youth um, and, and individuals that live along the corridor can benefit from the jobs of the project themselves. So kind of that those training programs, uh, the, those pathways uh, and whatnot, and both Hennepin County and Met Council um, have have programs. We've been we've been having internal discussions of how we really beef those up uh, through construction. So, uh, you know, and and I, maybe another other theme is just making sure spaces feel safe, right? That pedestrians feel safe crossing the roadways. That the the sidewalks themselves uh, feel nice. Um, kind of that whole infrastructure package. So, um, lot of details and conversation to be had, but those are just a couple of a few. That we've you know kind of identified with the community to 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 work towards and build upon um, as we move this project forward. Kathy, that one that might be one that you want to add to. Um, yeah, I think in addition to that, Sophia, I mean we are getting comments from folks um, through this process, right? And we encourage everybody here too to um, provide their comments on the draft report. And so we'll be gathering those and those will be um, available for people to kind of review on their own as well um, to understand, you know, what what other folks are saying about the project, um, which I think will include some some organizations and businesses along West Broadway Avenue. For the majority, I think, um, you know, we're, we're not hearing a lot of, um, you know, negative speak, just, you know, um, ideas concerns 
and um, that those are challenges for the project team to undergo some um, problem solving. And so we're, we're ready for that challenge. Uh, going on to the next question, um, and maybe we should just kind of, uh, the map that I have on the screen actually probably helps out that uh, a lot. So they're asking about where our stations are along the West Broadway and Minneapolis routes, and they're shown in blue, and maybe Nick, do you want to walk through the locations? I'll highlight them real quick. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll walk through them. So I think the, 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 the first one is, yes, we expect a Penn Avenue station at, at, on both alignments. So that makes a good connection to, to our, our C-line transit that, that goes through there. Uh, and, and, it, and it's an obvious route. So yes, both of those have that. So um, as we start in that Lowry or West Broadway route, we, we show in the, as, as Sophia pointed out, those blue uh, circles, ovals, uh, are, are station areas that, to, to consider. Um, North Memorial, uh, we kind of start off in that corner, uh, there will be a station there. Um, and then as we move along both routes uh, along that, 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 that Emerson Fremont area, that, that's with the D line going in there is another uh, a good location to, to put in a station and make those uh, robust transit connections. Now, this kind of goes into the next question a little bit. Uh, uh, as, as we go down West Broadway, uh, we're, we're showing a, a, a station at Plymouth Avenue uh, in that location for West Broadway and, and Lowry, that, that one over on Plymouth would, would, would serve kind of that north end of the North Loop. Um, but also there's an opportunity to, to evaluate stations along Washington Avenue uh, at West Broadway and up towards Lowry. So that, that, that kind of leaks, bleeds into the next question on, 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 on length. So uh, obviously the, the, the length and the route there adds to travel time for the Lowry route. So it, it is uh, you know, getting close to a mile longer just because it's, it's making that, 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 that 90 degree, that square corner. Um, and then there's the the opportunity for two more stations there, where you know that there there is some dwell time as this, as the, as the train stops at those stations, and you know even at 30 seconds, uh, you you add a, another minute for two two stations that that does start, um, you know not all the station it, it may be counterintuitive, but a lot of times the station does not add up ridership. It can actually be a hindrance to ridership because of the delay. Uh, avoiding a, a, a station. So that's something to keep in, into mind. So the, the length is probably more of a factor into the the, the time difference that, that would be between the two stations. Uh, uh, again, as I brought up before, uh, these would be operating with traffic. So uh, traffic signals really aren't going to uh, have much of an effect on the on the train because it's going to be operating uh, what, what we call a uh, you know, predictive priority uh, or pr predictive priority. So the train knows when that those light cycles are going to come. The lights are are coordinated together. So as the train's coming through, you know the hope is to get up through the, through that intersection along with the traffic, and 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 that the train doesn't have to stop at at a stoplight. So that the stoplights really aren't the the, the factor in 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 uh, uh, the the train times. It's it more, it, it's a of length. Yeah, it's a definition. It's really the length and 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 dwell time at a station. Um, so going, I think going to the answered both parts of that question. Going to the next one, it, um, it's when and how are the transit other transit support services the connections considered and chosen? Uh, the commenters noting kind of uh, the need for additional service or currently inadequate service. Um, to, especially across the river and kind of inadequate connections. And um, about two years before we open the line, we'll do a whole comprehensive service study. Uh, these, th these light rail lines, our whole metro system acts as kind of like a backbone to get people around. So we will analyze all the connecting bus routes um, and think about how best we can now serve serve this uh, regional area uh, with, with a transit improvement. So. Um, kind of comes a little bit later in the process, but is a very, very important piece that our service development undertakes in preparation for the, this investment coming online. So the overall goal, right, of these projects is to improve transit service and connections. Uh, and so the light rail brings the uh, an improved service and travel time and ease, and then those connecting pieces uh, kind of come on, come on uh, as we go through the process. 
I think that is all I'm seeing in chat right now. Oh, one more. How are you weighing the various criteria uh, for route decision? And so uh, maybe, oh, I, I don't want to give everybody vertigo uh, flipping through slides, but I will just go back real quick to the six goals. And so basically, we're not, there's no weight um, to a goal in, in terms of like it, uh, having goal one way more than goal four or six or whatever. Um, it's kind of showing the holistic package of um, of these uh, of these pieces and how they stack up again. We're at this point, we're not necessarily comparing them to each other, but how each individual route um, meets the, the various goals that are put out and the various inputs uh, that go into them. So, you know, if you're if you're going to, for example, goal one, um, and you have all these multiple factors that kind of go into them. So your um, your overall ridership and thinking of the, you know, so you kind of check check along the line. So if the route has, you know, all they all rate excellent um, in goal one, and so it's kind of you get through all of the various uh, pieces. So all the options provide increased um, reverse commute opportunities. They all expand linkages. They provide access to key destinations. And so um, what we're doing in the report is basically it going into the how we feed into the goals and kind of giving a rating from there. Um, and this is a place that you know we're really asking for community feedback too. Of it, as you kind of dive into them, do they? What do you think, right? Does it is it how it how you would stack it up? So um, I hope that answers your questions. But they're not weighted in terms of goal one is more than goal six. It's just showcasing how they stack up to to that goal. All give everybody kind of a second to see if they have any more questions. Um, and while they're doing that, I'll just thank everybody for joining us today and, and looking at our draft route modification report. Again, we really encourage comments uh, to this process. Uh, we're taking them through January 25th. So if you hop off and think, hmm, I really want this to be considered, please uh, come back to our website and you can either use the comment form or email me directly to have it as part of our project record. You know, comments at this phase really, really help us because if we know about it, then we're able to consider it and build upon it as we move as we move through the process. Again, um, our website also has a host of materials. So if you want to get deeper into the roadway design or potential station locations, uh, that's all available for you. If you want to visualize more of how LRT could look look. Uh, on these various roadways, we also have visualization. So if you're going to that interactive map and connecting through a lot, lot of resources for you and um, encourage you, you know, small comments, little comments, uh, we'll take them all. Um, all of your questions uh, will also be saved as part of the project record and reflected in what we've received through, through the draft report. So uh, again, thank you for your participation today and uh, we hope to see you all again at future events. And, and, and I, I will second a plug for the, for, for our project website. Uh, all this material that, that we have is, is incorporated in that project website. So there is a lot of material there to, to dive through, but, uh, but, but it is there for you to take a look at and evaluate. And then uh, it, it also gives you those contact points to either you know, we, you know, comment directly at the website uh, with our public coordinate um, uh, program that, that that's in there. You, you, you can interactively go in there and move things around, click on things, look at some of the options that we've had, leave comments on there, have discussions with other community members on those comments. So it, it's a great tool and, and it's and it's really good for us to 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 see those conversations going on, those comments that are happening, getting feedback from everybody. Um, so, and then uh, uh, oh, uh, encourage your we we have uh, recorded the presentation portion of this session. So 
if you have anybody that wants to kind of check it out, um, that it is, will be available online. Um, and uh, as Rob mentioned in the chat, there's also uh, in-person and virtual events happening next week. So encourage your neighbors to come and join us either for our evening session um, or we're in person in Robbinsdale in Minneapolis. So I think that concludes our meeting. Um, the three of us project staff will just hang out for a little bit in case anybody uh, pops in very late to the conversation. But uh, everybody else, have a wonderful day and thank you for joining us.